Well, good evening. Welcome uh, to Piers Morgan Uncensored, live from London. Sounds very difficult to be young in today's world. Barely a day passes without stories of profound woe amongst our youth. Kids' mental health is in crisis, we're told. Anxiety and depression rampant among children. There's even a child anxiety epidemic right here in the UK, apparently. It all sounds very alarming. It's also a bit confusing because, generally speaking, the world is getting more prosperous, less poor, safer, there are fewer wars, uh, people are living longer and healthier. It should be that young people feel quite happy, actually. Now that we've come through the pandemic, they should be, but they're not. And social media probably has a lot to do with that. An entire digital world of vipers exists where self-esteem can be measured directly in likes. Even I would worry about that if I wasn't, well, so well-liked. But perhaps there's a bigger problem here, and it's us. We ghastly adults who at some point decided we should teach children to be mortally offended by everyone and utterly terrified of everything and that they could win at everything and never lose. Fresh from ransacking Roald Dahl's legendary children's stories, so-called sensitivity readers... God, that phrase just fills my skin with horror. Doesn't it yours? It make you just literally sensitivity readers. I've now said about cancelling, you guessed it, this. Come on, Slug, throw the ball! Oh, I've got it! Oh, I've got it! Oh, Spotty! What are you doing in my pea soup? I used to love the bastard kids in the beaner. Those mischievous little rogues in Britain's best loved comic book. They were always problematic, it's why I like them. I like them being problematic. They've entertained children for 67 years without complaint. You know what? Kids can be problematic. I've had four of them. The consultants from Inclusive Minds, the very same people who censored Roald Dahl's books, have quietly decided there needs to be some changes. Of course they do. The B now now takes professional advice from its committee of Fun Police, which has helped to rebrand its characters and vet its back catalogue. Spotty, who is called Spotty because he's spotty, is now known as Scotty. He's still got spots, you just can't say it. And Fatty, who was called Fatty because he's a fatty, is now known as Freddy, even though he's still fat. We just can't call him that. The kids have been joined by five new pupils, including Harsha, Mahira and Mandira, in order to be more inclusive. Mandira is featured in storylines about mental health to apparently highlight the anxieties facing children. Perhaps they should do one about Mandira being warned that her friend Fatty is offensive. This is from the same set of geniuses who changed cloud men to cloud people in James and the Giant Peach and decided the black tractors in Fantastic Mr Fox could not be described as black because it was potentially racist to other tractors, presumably. Now, there are two points here. The first is about censorship. If we continue to rewrite every work of fiction based on today's sensibilities, you're going to have to keep doing it every 10 years until you're left with a sanitised slab of nonsense that bears zero resemblance to the original. The context of when something was written is part of what makes it informative and interesting. The second point is this. We heard a hell of a lot less about child anxiety when Fatty and Spotty were on the loose, because they were considered to be funny then. It was a joke. It was a cartoon. If we genuinely want our kids to feel happier and less anxious, maybe we should stop teaching them constantly that the entire world is out to get them. Show them how to be less offended by absolutely everything. Stop allowing them to all get a prize in everything they compete in at school so they all think that they're winners when sometimes they're not. Because none of that is a proper preparation for the real world. The one that in Barbie land is such a shock to Margot Robbie when she gets to it. The real world, I'm afraid, is warts and all. It can be tough out there. So why don't we prepare kids for how to handle it rather than cover them in cotton wool? Well, I'm joined now by broadcaster and former Brexit MEP, Alex Phillips, talk to contributor and lawyer, Paula Ron Adrian, and political journalist, Ava Santina. All right, um, Alex, I, no, I brought up four kids. Uh, I'm not perfect by any means. I mean, nearly perfect as a father, probably. Um, but this sanitising of everything, this overprotection, this wrapping in cotton wool, this nobody can lose, nobody can be called any funny names in cartoons, blah, blah, blah. It's, a, it's exhausting. And B, all it seems to be doing is increasing 
the amount of anxiety in kids. All the figures show the situation's getting worse, not better. I would argue this strategy hasn't worked. It's had the opposite effect. Yeah, it's utter madness. I mean, what we seem to be doing as a society now is making our kids into little hypochondriacs to worry about everything, to mm. police their own language at the time they should be learning how to develop their communication skills, to see everything through the prism of race, to see everything through the prism of gender. And then at the same time, the things perhaps we should protect them from, adult fetish, pornography, we're, we're foisting upon them at an alarming rate. And I don't understand what children are supposed to be anymore. Mm. Are they supposed to engage with this adult world of critical race theory and uh, extreme adult content? A hundred genders. There, there, yeah, there is no more innocence. Safeguarding has gone out the window. All right, Paula, we've discussed a lot of these issues, mm. all right? And I get that some kids are anxious. I've met quite a few kids who have a lot of anxiety problems. I think a lot of it is social media driven. I think a lot of it is dopamine driven, that they're exposed through social media to a constant barrage of imagery from walls and other things, which we would simply would never have seen yes. when I was a kid. So I think yes. that cannot be overlooked, this constant sensory overload impacting negatively. And yet all the statistics will show young people, if they calmly explained, there's never been a better time to be alive, actually. But the statistics will also tell you, Piers, about the suicide rate amongst children, about how their mental health is suffering, about how children are being bullied, both personally and online in the social world, mm. social media world. And so when we look at the Beano, what surprised me about this story is that we weren't applauding what the Beano were doing. We weren't you know, saying we weren't championing what they were doing, which is to stop children from calling each other names because that's not appropriate. Well, you think it's, it's going to stop it's because the Beano stops using names? I mean, come on. But it, well, yes, I do actually, because it's teaching children that it's not appropriate. And you call somebody by their name, which is Frank, John, Paula, or Alex. You don't call them Spotty. You don't call them Darky. You don't call them Fatty. You call them by their name. And so, what you are doing by, but what the Beano is doing is acknowledging that it's anachronistic in its style, and that it shouldn't be. That it should be taking responsibility for providing a positive message for children. Stop being mean children. Yeah, but the trouble is, life is tough, Ava. And life is very mean. You know, I always remind people of the Rocky Balboa speech to his son, who's a spoiled, entitled brat in the sixth movie, and eventually Rocky loses it with him in the street and says, look, life is hard. It will beat you down, right? And the challenge of succeeding in life is how many times you can get back up and keep moving forward. It's not how hard you can punch. It's about how hard you can get punched and keep going. We know this. Mm -hmm. And I, my argument is I think we're just not preparing kids properly for the real world. And, and trying to create this kind of Barbie-style utopia where no one's mean, no one uses mean words, all that kind of thing, means you basically have to airbrush now every work of literature going back in history because it was all full of mean stuff. No, I think you're it was, it was. Come on. From Roald Dahl to the Beano, they're all getting censored. Right. I don't get it. I don't get any of it works. I think it's quite obvious that parents probably don't want to sit down in 2023 and read a bedtime story to their child about, you know, mm. fatty and spotty. I think it's probably market. I do. Hang on, I think it's probably market I do. forces that have dictated it and you love the free market. And I think they've probably looked at it and gone, do you know what, Beano not really being consumed anymore. Mm. Why don't we try to get this, you know, somehow purchased and back in schools, back at bedtime. And that's, this is how they've responded. Well, let me throw this back at you. My daughter calls, she's 11. She calls me fatty all the time, right? And does this to me all the time. Good, it makes me go to the gym. Didn't know this morning. <laughs> I was actually, that's very, very different. I was actually Barbie pressing story. this morning to to uh, female trainers. I mean, this is how I this is how I, how I flow. But the point is, I'm not offended mm -hmm. when she does that. I think it's funny, right? It used to be you could laugh at stuff like that. But what we're now in, we're now in a world where Cosmopolitan magazine, one of the most influential magazines for young women in this country, puts a 305 pound model model on the front cover and doesn't mention anywhere in the text, either on the cover or inside, that this is morbidly obese and very dangerous. OK. It's we celebrate being incredibly fat. But if you dare to use the word fatty in the Beano about a fictitious character, all hell breaks loose, the sensitivity beliefs get called in, it all has to be changed. Explain to me how that is good for society or good for the well-being of young women who think that being 305 pounds when you're five foot two is a great thing to be. It's body positive. Because okay. no one's got the gumption to go, sorry, you are morbidly obese, 
You're going to die. And by the way, if you all want to be this fat, you're all going to die too. But then we should have done that for the models who are 80 pounds and six mm. foot tall, who were on magazines for 20 years and gave, you know, the whole world eating disorders. I said the same thing about the, you know, the size zero yes, campaign. I said that was any, wrong too. There was never any warning on there of how a woman achieved that body frame. No one ever talked about the smoking. Never. No one ever talked about the drug taking or the excessive dieting. None of that ever appeared in a magazine. And Piers, I guarantee your daughter, when she calls you fatty, and you have that lovely little inside joke. You're not you have, no, but you have She's a good, allowed to, you can't. But when you have a good joke about it and you're having, you know, yeah. this nice, lovely moment, I guarantee you didn't teach her that word. That's probably something she's picked up and now you enjoy and you have a nice laugh. Yeah, you know what she's picked it up? you didn't teach her that. She's picked it up because actually kids do that kind of thing. They're kids, yeah. right? They're not going to stop because the beanos changes it's everyone's strange. name. If you taught her that word, wouldn't it? If huh? you were at bedtime and you taught her that word from the beano book, that would be a bit strange. I just think I've tried to teach my all my kids... Just don't worry about... The old, my, my mother always told me, you know, we talk about the patriarchy. I lived in a matriarchy with these wonderfully strong women in my family, my grandmother, my mother, my sister, my daughter's inheriting the same thing. And it's just that sticks and stones will break your bones, oh, but words will never hurt Come you. On, You're please. very much a, never mind sticks and stones, words are far worse. They're not. But They're Piers, literally not. Piers, and you know that that's not true. I do that's not know it's true. I think that's a really dangerous theory to push. We no. know that words hurt. We know that because our law recognises that fact, that people are often mistreated with words and that it can impact on their lives. We know that bullying, which doesn't have to include physical attacks, mm -hmm. When we're talking about a verbal assault on somebody, it can often have the same threatening and intimidating effect as it could if you were physically assaulted. Mm. So I know, to, but my point well, is... Well, if you say I you know... Well, then, if you say you know, then we need to acknowledge but that because they are viewers are... watching this yeah. who think it's appropriate to stand over a partner and shout abuse at them in their face or to even Don't whisper it... That? Or to even whisper it in their... I don't know there's any because viewers. Some, because my viewers them... are not those sort of people. Because... Uh, let's... Oh, absolutely not. I would hope. I would I'd hope that they're not. I have a discerning audience. I'd hope that they're not. Um, but Sadiq thoroughly... Khan recognises right. that abuse can be verbal as right. well You're as. You're never going to persuade me that verbal uh, mockery and stupid phrases is ever going to come close to physical violence. Well, maybe Meghan Markle might be able to do that. Well, Meghan Markle dishes it out like anyone I've ever seen in my life. She thinks it's fine to call the royal family a bunch of horrible racist scumbags no. and make hundreds of millions of dollars. You never complain when she does that. But you or you that only complain if people say how disgusting. But you say that that is not appropriate, and that's exactly the example that I wanted you no, to no, give. No, no, you're missing it's my point completely. It's not appropriate you're missing to my use point. language But you're that not would going to sanitise somebody. the world, Paula. You're we, not. We, you're not going to stop to people sanitize. being mean. We don't the have to sanitise the world. Is we a can mean teach place. people to be kind. All right, let's teach people. What about teaching people to just the bleeding obvious.